Good day. My name is Keith McKinnon. I am a Masonic collector who with over 30 years experience. I'm also a member of the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts uh, Library and uh, Museum Committee. Uh, whenever I walk into a Masonic building and or see a Masonic collection, I look for the unusual items. And unusual does not mean, always mean that it's a rare or hard to find piece but unusual is to the eye of the beholder, meaning that what I consider unusual, you may not. But what I brought here today is a couple of pieces. One of them is what I consider unusual. This piece here is not. This is what we call a Masonic jewel holder or case. I have heard it called many names, including a garage. This is the earlier version of what we use today. This is about the 1900s. Uh, it is a Masonic uh, metal holder. It is made by a heavy cardboard uh, or card uh, paper skeleton with a leather uh, overlay. It has two flaps with a snap, two inner flaps that keeps the metal or jewel stabilized with a cushion, usually made of a velvet material to secure and also protect the jewel or metal. In today's Masonic Society, you will see these. Again, it's a heavy card stock material with a leather-like material over it, two snaps, two outer lids with two inner flaps and also a cushion on the inside. And most of the time, you will find the manufacturer and or jeweler's name stamped on the inside. This is its predecessor, or basically it's the forefather of these two holders. Now, these came in a rectangular form, but they have come in all different shapes. This one here has a raised lid, others were a flat lid, some actually with raised and a dome top. They came in different materials. This one here has a wooden skeleton with leather over it. Others had a some sort of a composite or a paper skeleton, and then it was lacquered many times over to give it a hard shell. It has a clasp or locking mechanism that keeps it secure. This one here opens to the side. Others that I have seen have opened from the top. On the inside is usually a cotton material that is used to cushion the metal of the jewel. Its lining is usually satin, silk, or cloth material. Most cases, silk. 95% of the time, you will always find the manufacturer or jeweler's name on the inside stamped. Now, this particular case dates from 1865 to 1875. How we know this is, is because of the Judah's name. Charles Kennard uh, was born in Portsmouth, New Hampshire in 1835, came to Boston, got into the jewelry business, uh, formed a partnership with Bigelow and got into the uh, jewelry business in 1860. And in 1865, it seems that he went on his own, became Charles Kennard and Company, uh, which was located at 122 Tremont Street in Boston, just down the street from our current Grand Lodge building. In 1875, it seems that he partnered up with a Jenks and became a Kennard and Jenks company. And then in the 1880s, it was bought outright. Now, <clears throat> what I consider unusual is, unfortunately, uh, Chuck is not here today, but in his Masonic collection, uh, he has uh, Napoleon era prisoner of war medals, which I consider very unusual. In Brian's building in Attebo, uh, there's an unusual piece in his museum that is not even Masonic. And that, to me, is the fire extinguisher device that they found in the upper floors of their lodge room. Uh, in Newtonville, it is the stuffed lion's paw that is in a glass case that I always look at when I'm in Newtonville. And from John's collection that was earlier uh, from Aleppo, it's going to be the mechanical camel. 
So in every building or collection, there's always that unusual piece. And why I consider this unusual is because we don't use this style anymore. Uh, these were used from the 1850s to about the 1920s. When these cases became more cheaper, lightweight, and smaller to fit into your pocket to be used, these, this type of case was discarded. Now the name of this case is also unusual and why I love these things. Its meaning, or one of its meanings, is a vessel that holds, stores, or transports. So I present to you, because of its shape, how it opens, and what it's called, a Masonic jewel casket. And Michael, as I promised that I would bring here today for you to display, what is another name for a casket? Correct. Coffin. So I also present to you the nickname that is associated with this piece, a Masonic Jewel Coffin. So the next time you present a past master's jewel to a past master, and you give him the nice leatherette case to hold his medal, make sure you use the proper name, a casket. And if you want to see a few eyebrows rise, call it a coffin. Thank you.